Hello everyone, welcome you all to Diesel Ship. This is Ram Govinda Sami, MEO Class 1 Marine Engineer. Uh, today's topic is going to be about keyless propellers. We have made animations of uh, keyless propellers, the parts, the assembly and push up of uh, uh, propeller uh, into the taper and uh, uh, dismantling procedures and everything. And also we have shown you the real time images and videos of uh, removal of uh, propellers and installation of propellers. However, we recommend you to watch the first few minutes of the video which covers keyed propellers and the drawbacks of keyed propellers and the reason why the shipping industry moved from keyed propellers into keyless propellers. Uh, knowing keyed propellers is of significant importance because most of the maritime competency exams and the examiners do ask about keyed propellers and their disadvantages. So please watch the first few minutes. If you're really not interested and you really want to know about the keyless propellers, you can skip few minutes and go into the animation straight away. However, I do recommend you to watch the keyed propeller information as well. Let's get into the next topic. As I mentioned early, earlier, uh, before we see keyless propellers, we should first understand what is a keyed propeller shaft. To transmit shaft power to a propeller or any other connected devices, what do I mean by devices? Uh, shaft power is transmitted to impellers in a pump or a pulley in an engine or any chain driven uh, power transmission circuits. Everywhere, the shaft power is transmitted to these kind of attached devices through a key and in transferring the motion from propeller shaft to the propeller, a keyway slotted in both propeller and the shaft with a key inserted which actually transmit the power. Let's see the animation here. As you can see, this is the key and this is the propeller shaft and this is the propeller hub. Propeller hub is connected and then the key is inserted. And now as the shaft turns, it is going to transmit the power into the propeller. Okay, why were the keyed propellers discontinued? There are two main reasons. One, the need for brute force and the stress damage cost due to it and cracks due to keyways. We'll see it one by one. Brute force, what do I mean by brute force? Is it something like this where you really need a superhero to impart the force that is required? Yes, what do I mean by brute force is to remove the nut or to tighten the nut. Um, it required a, a force that is enormous. So, as ship sizes started increasing, the shaft diameters and propeller sizes also increased accordingly and the primitive method of tightening or slackening involved usage of brute force by using hammer. Usually it weighs about 200 to 250 kilograms and which is slung from a support at the stern frame by a rope and that is made to swing from a higher position so that it can struck on the uh, wrench head with a strong impact causing the nut to ease off. It is like you use a hammer with a spanner to loosen or tighten the nut. Imagine the size of hammer which is so huge. The second reason is crack on the keyways. As you can see on the picture that is shown in, shown in the video, uh, there is a discontinuity of the grain structure in a shaft due to keyway which is slotted and this causes cracks and these cracks have caused so many ships in that era 1950s to 1970s uh, many ships were lost i mean many propellers were lost even the ships were lost due to unavailability unavailability of the propulsion power you evolution of keyless propellers okay large powers required large diameter of the propeller to operate at the same shaft speed Proportionately, the mass also increased, right? So increased propeller mass causes fatigue failure. Uh, fatigue failure, yes, it's a constant on and off kind of stress that is caused when the propeller turns through the water. And uh, imagine the propeller is such a huge mass, which can vary from 5 tons to 50 tons. 
and that is hung on the on one end of the shaft so it is a mass hung at the end that is causing a real stress on the shafting and the even the transmission systems the classification societies then recommended the elimination of the key and keyway but at the same time they wanted to play it safe so they recommended two changes initially one is to increase the taper ratio from 1 is to 14 to 1 is to 18 to 1 is to 20 and placing a cast iron sleeve between the shaft taper and the propeller boss this was intended to increase the coefficient of friction however taper ratio worked and cast iron sleeve failed because the locked in shrinking stress was not uniform this is the issue of cast iron as the matrix is not uniform and there is also free graphite which is found in the matrix that caused non-uniform stress leading to breakage and crack of the sleeve. The present confirmed method which most of the ships use these days or is to force fit the propeller directly on the shaft taper. Okay, we are in the third part and I'm going to show you an animation. What you see on the screen is the tail shaft you see the shaft taper and the threaded portion for the pilgrim nut to attach and let me show you the propeller this is the propeller with the tapered boss the boss does look like rectangle one but i've just shown it as a tapered one uh, so it makes it easier for us to understand the propeller is then fitted this way and then the pilgrim nut is attached that holds propeller in its place Okay, this is how the parts of the propeller assembly looks like. Right. Right now, what you see on the screen is a pilgrim nut. Pilgrim nut, it is a simple nut. It is a simple nut with a loading flange on the top. What you see, what I show you here is a loading flange and it is connected to a piston and the piston is placed inside a cylinder. If and connected to a lube oil slot, lube oil plug. And if the hydraulic pressure is inserted, this space gets pressurized due to which the piston moves the loading flange. Let's see it in animation. I'm connecting a hydraulic pump and I'm increasing the pressure. Now it's 900 bar. Let's see what happens. The pressure inside the liner increases and that pushes the piston and due to which the loading flange is pushed imagine when the loading flange is pushed the propeller in the front also gets pushed due to hydraulic force if the nut were to, to be used vertically this is exactly where how the rudder is held in place even the rudder nut is of a pilgrim nut type which is used to hold the rudder when it is removed also to push it up when the rudder is installed okay uh, you see three images here the first image here shows the complete assembly disregard this hose because this picture was taken when we were doing the pressure testing of the pilgrim nut covers after installation so this is how a propeller installation looks like the second image i have exposed the pilgrim nut in the next slide we'll see it more closer these two or the covers of pilgrim nut these two or the covers of the pilgrim nut this is the inner cover and then there is an outer cover as well and let's go to the next where i'm going to expose the pilgrim nut in close these are the slots used to place the spanner and the keyway to tighten and this is a two half uh, cover end cover of a pilgrim nut right you see here the rope when the pilgrim nut is once loosened with a spanner and then this man here is just loosening it with the rope. It's a simple technique. There's no science behind it. Okay, the next animation, I'm going to show you how a keyless propeller is actually fitted. What you see on the screen is a tail shaft without a propeller or a pilgrim nut. Next is I'm going to show you the propeller, which is to be pushed against the shaft right and then the pilgrim nut is going to be fitted here right as you see there is still some gap okay so far how did we move this propeller we moved the propeller using this lifting shackle lifting eye bolt 
the propeller was simply moved with a crane and you see here is some more distance that has to be covered this is where we use the pilgrim nut and the hydraulic force right this is another closer view of the pilgrim nut that i wanted to show you okay right now you see the distance here which has to be covered by the propeller right and then i have shown you the pilgrim nut with uh, its uh, cross sectional view and the shaded portion here the hatched portion here is the loading flange so the loading flange has to move this way which will move push this propeller against i mean towards the shaft here and it has to cover this distance let's see okay i'm connecting the hydraulic jack and now i'm going to pressurize now i'm going to pump the hydraulic pressure and i'm going to pressurize the pilgrim nut first as you see the pressure is increased but nothing happens because the propeller is stuck against the taper and we need some coefficient of friction uh, to make it easy for the pilgrim nut to push it so what happens next is we are going to open the valves here on the propeller hub and we are going to start the hydraulic pump and that is going to pressurize the hub which is going to fill the internal parts where there is circumferential grooves made inside the propeller hub which is filled with hydraulic oil and then the pressure exerted there due to the 900 bar pressure that we just put in the propeller hub has expanded slightly that is enough for the pilgrim nut to push it against let's see now the pressure inside the pilgrim nut acts on the loading flange now you can see the pro propeller is pushed against right okay this image i show you here is to show you see you see three connections on the propeller hub these are the three hydraulic connections and this is the hydraulic connection on the pilgrim nut in my animation i had shown the hydraulic connection connecting to the pilgrim nut but it has to be connected to a stationary part and as the loading flange is a stationary part so the hydraulic connection is connected here okay as a closer view again uh, this is this shows you the hydraulic connection on the pilgrim nut right so now we know that the propeller is pushed against uh, the shaft that against the taper towards the shaft and this dial gauge is fitted prior to starting the operation and this dial gauge shows how much has the propeller been moved and this is to be compared with the measurement that is prescribed in the manual propeller manual and also another way of testing is with the inside micrometer and we measure the same distance with inside micrometer and this has to be checked against the value given in the manuals right okay now the propeller is in we are satisfied the manual uh, i mean whatever the distance prescribed in the manual is satisfied now we have to close the pilgrim nut right right how can we do that let's see we are going to release the pressure from the propeller hub so the bottom is released you can see the pressure is going down also usually this oil is also collected here from here to a bucket to just to ensure that there is no oil present inside the propeller because with oil inside the propeller may have less coefficient of friction it may slide back so you might have seen that there was uh, the ripples that formed is now off and the propeller returns back to its original dimension and hence it is force fit it will not slide anymore now we are going to release the top part the pressure from the top part as you can see the pressure is going down therefore the pressure from the pilgrim nut is removed now yes now this is how it is going to look like then we are going to manually turn clockwise the pilgrim nut which is going to move the pilgrim nut towards the propeller and then the final end plate is attached manually which i have not shown here and uh, let's see here this is a video showing how manually the pilgrim nut is tightened you see there's a sling which is wound around and it is lifted by a by a crane and you see the oil is oozing out of course the oil is contained in a container below which is not shown here 
we have to save the sea from pollution so the oil still oozes out this is what happens and this oil also as as we turn the oil is keeps oozing out okay let me quickly show you the spanner that is used to tighten the pilgrim nut this is the spanner which is usually carried on board uh, this is fitted like this with the key here that connects the slot between the spanner and the pilgrim nut and this is how it is tightened it is lifted by a crane the crane is calibrated torque calibrated and it is tightened it is set to the torque which is recommended by the propeller manufacturer and it will stop when the torque is reached and then the finally the two half cover is will be placed on the pilgrim nut and that will end the process all right with that we would like to conclude this video about keyless propellers thank you all for watching this video please do subscribe to our channel diesel ship and visit us for more videos like this thank you